PowerPoint. So yeah, I'm going to provide a, a small insight into to Kute loader compromises um, that we observed quite recently, um, which links back to the previous slide that, that Laurie was showing, um, as we've indeed seen uh, kind of professional services, uh, manufacturing, financial, um, as well as legal, as you said, um, among those hit with Kute loader quite recently. So Kute loader is observed during the initial access phase of compromise. Um, it's commonly seen distributed by uh, search engine optimization or, or hosted on compromised sites. Um, and just to go over search engine optimization, if you're unfamiliar, uh, this is where a threat actor, a threat actor will create a website, um, likely cloning a, a legitimate website, and they're looking to perform various techniques. Um, this is to ensure that their um, website appears at the top of search results, and um, therefore more likely to, to be get, getting clicked by a victim. Uh, and threat actors have also been observed compromising legitimate websites, um, mainly uh, WordPress sites, um, using a number of vulnerabilities to gain access. And then they host their malicious content um, as a sort of watering hole uh, for, for victims to, to, to reach out and, and grab that malicious content. Again, this all provides an additional layer of legitimacy for, for the, and trust uh, for victims. So the benefits for uh, threat actor really um, with this kind of social engineering is much harder for defenders to detect this activity at this stage um, as there is no interaction with the um, victim infrastructure at this point. It's just sort of essentially just sitting there uh, waiting for a user to, to reach out uh, and interact and grab that, that content and running it. In terms of theming for Gootloader, um, really we've seen these centered around business related themes um, such as legal matters, agreements and contracts. Um, and the image on the left there shows um, the targeting of legal professionals um, and searching for templates, uh, just as one example. And the bottom image shows a few examples of the file names we've seen. Um, each law has a direct correlation to uh, the victim organization that, it, um, that became victim. Again, this reinforces the idea that the, the, the organizations, uh, the users um, are seeking out um, assistance to their work uh, and business by searching for information um, related to their work uh, and becoming victim due to these laws. And the top one in particular is quite interesting, uh, and that relates to US state tax information. Uh, and that was actually seen during the middle of uh, the US tax calendar. Um, so threat actors uh, appear to certainly be adapting to key dates to change their th uh, thematics, similar to how we would normally see it as well with um, phishing lures. And Goot loader infections typically lead to large scale exfiltration uh, of data, um, and in some cases extortion um, threats, which uh, Laurie touched on. Uh, if we move on to the next slide, I'm uh, just going to go through uh, a typical attack chain for Goot Loader, um, which we observed in March and April um, this year, so quite recently. And this starts with a zip file, um, which is downloaded from a browser, as, as I mentioned um, previously, through various social engineering techniques. Um, and like many of these initial access vectors that we see, this requires a user to interact several times, uh, even after the, the file has been downloaded. And in this case, uh, we see the user has to um, not only download the, the file, reach out, find the information and, and download it, um, but they also have to unzip the, the file and then run the malicious JavaScript file um, that then really kicks off the rest of the compromise. So once the malicious um, JavaScript file is executed, um, a second file, a second JavaScript file is dropped, um, which we observed um, several times in the roaming uh, Adobe directory. Uh, next up, um, going back to the kind of the initial um, script, um, this goes on to create a registry key, um, and that adds a root certificate. It then goes on to create a schedule task, um, typically pointing to the second JavaScript file for persistence. And in other incident response cases, um, we also observed um, the um, execution of Cobalt Strike DLL uh, as part of that schedule task, so kind of interchangeable, really, on, on what was in that schedule task and what was executed. And you see on the left there the, the names of the schedule tasks. Um, although um, we didn't really um, have any correlation to between the names and the victims, um, they're certainly noticeable uh, as names of scheduled tasks and should um, hopefully stand out amongst legitimate names and, and legitimate activity. And then moving on to the second JavaScript file, that spawned uh, Windows PowerShell um, using WScript and C script, uh, and that was seen um, communicating to uh, command and control IP addresses and domains. The PowerShell as well performed various host enumeration, um, and one such enumeration script uh, was seen in uh, instant response, uh, was called pshound.ps1. And that appears to be a variation of uh, the Bloodhound uh, well-known enumeration tool. 
Uh, fortunately, in these cases, uh, further malicious actions were prevented, um, and these were following alerts from our behavioral detections. Uh, and these particular alerts were for uh, a script file um, creating a scheduled task, um, and then the second one being a script process um, spawning PowerShell, um, and then followed by external connections. Um, so this detection is really kind of following kind of chains of events um, to then eventually alert um, uh, the SOC and then cause the, the incident incident response to to happen. So these caused analysts to quickly respond and contain these incidents. Um, however, in the world, um, outside of, of, of this sort of case study, um, Gootloader has additionally been seen um, leading to installations of uh, co further Cobalt Strike payloads, as well as Gootkit, which is a, a sophisticated banking Trojan. So just to summarize um, this particular case study, um, so Gootloader um, has been seen delivered widely through um, search engine optimization um, poisoning and also through um, compromised sites. And as I mentioned, the, the social engineering targeting really was around business related laws, again, really centered around um, users seeking out inf um, the information that they want for uh, work purposes and then falling victim. And this could potentially lead to not only Gootkit and Cobalt Strike, as I mentioned, um, but this is really just setting a foothold for a threat actor, so potentially other malware families related to data theft uh, and ransomware. And just to um, finish off with uh, recommendations, really user uh, education um, is a really important step in reducing this risk of, of initial access, um, particularly when searching for information um, we can often feel quite secure when we're going out and, and grabbing information, feel maybe more in control um, when we're kind of um, actually searching for this. However, this really reminds us to, to stay vigilant in that. And then the behavioral detection I really wanted to highlight um, in alerting early in the, in the kill chain, uh, again, chaining these kind of um, suspicious processes together um, can really create um, powerful alerting, which we've definitely found um, extremely um, uh, powerful, yeah, um, for, for a number of range of threats, not just Gootkit, um, but a, a wide range of malware families.